Bradford Anderson. You know what's cool about being primarily on YouTube? <laughs> what's that? We don't have to do long intros. Hey, Marcus Coloma. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Hello. How are oh, you? So we're just jumping right into this one, huh? Okay, good. <laughs> I love so it. So we got our buddy here, Marcus Coloma. What's going on, Marcus? Where are you at right now? Hey, so I'm in uh, I'm in Florida right now. Uh, temporarily out here. I I I really you... am enjoying it. We live in a in a time where you don't have to necessarily be in LA to go on oh, auditions. Totally. And yeah. My kid goes to school out here, and she loves it. So yeah, awesome. I was like, yeah, I'm I'm very excited to check out a new place. I've been in LA for 25 years, and uh, I've I've gone out for jobs for maybe four months max. Um, so I'm really excited to kind of check out a new town, you know? Yeah. What That's part cool, of Florida man. is it? Clearwater, Florida. Oh, dude. It's awesome down there. It's incredible. It. That's my, it's I always so say this, but that's where my grandparents, you know, uh, lived and I would always go, it's Saint, you know, Tampa, St. Pete, Clearwater. Okay. So golf side, right? Yeah. Yeah. Golf side. Yeah. yeah it's awesome there. It's oh, look, no, man. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Sarasota was awesome. Cause they lived on this thing, uh, this little Island inlet, whatever called Longboat key. <clears throat> So it was just, dude, it felt like you were in a different, like in the tropics all the time. It was just amazing. It was amazing, man. Absolutely. Great, great way to visit a family and grow up. So it was a lot of fun, but how I does, love it. How, how do you do with the humidity? Does your skin, does your hair <laughs> like the humidity? Well, I don't know. What, I don't think my hair likes anything, to be honest. It's always, <laughs> uh, I was going to say the hair, you got hair, good hair today. What's going on? Yeah, dude? I mean, this is literally, uh, this is bed head. Just, just got, just got up. Yeah, exactly. Well, in Florida, it's after lunch, so uh, I guess you're just taking it easy, huh? Yeah. Well, I got so I, I was in LA, and I kind of got adjusted to that time schedule for about seven days, um, and I just honestly laid in bed all all morning today. I was like, I'm just gonna chill. My daughter comes in tonight. She was on Sweet. a ski trip, and nice. so I was just enjoying a very relaxing morning. Oh, well awesome, done. Man. Sorry, to, sorry to bust it up. Hey, so how <laughs> how often do you go in the water there? Um, uh, I, I don't really go into the water that much. Can, to can, can you please start going in the water? There, I yeah, know I, I really there. should. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It's beautiful. I go on a lot of walks and a lot of runs. Uh, but for some reason I don't get in the water that much. It's pretty, it, I mean, I know it's Come January, on, so it's not the warmest it's ever going to be, but the Gulf is, does it stay fairly warm? Yeah. The Gulf's warm, definitely warm, probably 10 degrees warmer than, than. The, the Pacific Atlantic Ocean. Side? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, so or the Pacific true. Ocean. Yeah. Yeah. To answer your question, I do good in the humidity. I mean, my dad's from Hawaii, so this is very similar to that. But the thing that's missing out here, there are no waves. And I think that's what. Oh, yeah, for sure. The ocean. <clears throat> um, but I guess I could go for swims and exercise yeah. in that way. You, know? you check you check in the water temperature, Steve? Yeah, it's a little, it could be is deemed it cold. It could be deemed cold. 60, 61. It's Ooh. not. That's that, reason, but that'll yeah. get you. It's not a cold plunge, but no. you yeah, might yeah. feel something down in the shorts. Are you, you still doing? <laughs> do you, yeah, are you still are you still doing your cold plunges, Stevie B? I do, uh, not as often as I was, but I do. Yeah, what is wow. the weather temperature down by you these days? Uh, you know, it's fifty. Okay. Oh, but yeah, forty. You know, forty-five, forty-six in the morning. It's been raining, so. But, the water temperature is 45? No, the water temperature is in the 50s. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, nice. I, and before whatever. I forget, I just want to really remark on the fact that, oh, no, don't. Oh, now that you're taking it off, you look uh -oh. like uh, Rhythm Nation Janet Jackson because you had like the, 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 the black hat and the, and the, like that thing. It was amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> well, that's definitely going off now. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> it was right about to anyway. Um, so, Marcus, let's, too. let's. Oh, my gosh, let, man. Let's, let's talk about. That's Let's awesome. talk about your your run here on General Hospital real quick. General right? Hospital sounds familiar. Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. So how long how long did you play Nicholas Cassidy? Three years, almost three hundred episodes. Wow. Uh, wow. This damn dude. It's, it seemed longer than three years. I thank you. I'm, I guess I don't know. No, but it seems like we've been friends longer than three years. Oh, I see what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, know. It's, it seems way, it seems like you've been my friend for 10 years. I, I'm just saying that in a great way because three years seems short to me. So, well, and also well, in the yeah, midst of the, in the, that was a pretty crazy three years in terms of, you know, like 
because you started must have started pre-pandemic right because right before the pandemic i think right. uh, october 2019 was my right. first air day yeah and yeah. i agree i feel like i think we've had such deep conversations that we i think we we probably fast forwarded the friendship probably yeah yes uh, got through that small talk you. bs pretty quick yeah, yeah we did <laughs> yeah there was really no oh, small talk no we small just talk. we just dove right in that's we right dove right that's in. right so three years 300 isn't it amazing that you can do 300 episodes of anything and not have it be you know, and not amazing. be set for life in terms of residuals <laughs> 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 or how about no residuals yeah exactly no it's just how about, it, it, how about zero it, yeah. if, how about, if you go up to like if you were just having a general like conversation with another actor and they're like oh yeah i just got off of the show Dude, can you imagine for a bit and they're like oh yeah how many episodes 300 they'll be like oh my god you're so lucky you're never allowed to work again true. dude I, it's so it's so crazy no i don't so I, that's what i was right? gonna, that's what i was gonna say i'm like i've done i don't even know how many i'm just gonna say three thousand episodes of something right and crazy and and, I and, get you, got, no and you got the, and you got that nice t-shirt and and all i got <laughs> yeah, is this exactly. t-shirt <laughs> now, all I got was this lousy black t-shirt. <laughs> if, if you had to describe that arc and, you know, like, I, I'm not sure if, you know, and you, you can talk about it if you want, like how, how, how long you would wanted that arc to be, or like there's, cause there's this, there's, there's this, there's this term called what golden handcuffs that we mm -hmm. people use for a lot of experiences in their life. And man, you know, when you're on a daytime show and, and you you enjoy what you're doing and you feel this the perceived stability of it um but boy is that not always great as an artist and i'm trying to lead you down a path here that i'm not sure I, you want to go down but i'm just curious like how if you were to describe that arc how would you, in the po most positive way i guess how how would you describe it yeah it, it's well, he's not going to be he's not going to be negative so he can no no i mean it was fascinating <laughs> because look <clears throat> I think anybody who comes to LA or anywhere now, cause you can be anywhere, but anyone that says I'm going to pursue being an actor is you're a dreamer. You know, you've got your, your saying by that statement, I am going to go all in uh, on a hand that is very, unlikely going to be successful and it, you're not, you're probably <laughs> not gonna, you know, and I, I, when I came down, I mean, the, the films that inspired me were like lethal weapon, die hard. I mean, uh, uh so Top I was nine. looking at these big movies that that's what brought me to LA. Right. And you realize very quickly that, um, that that's very challenging to get into those. And so then it just shifted. I fell in love with acting and I really loved the craft of acting. I really love getting a piece of paper and some guy's written some story and then you try to just feel it in with life. Mm. Uh, and it was really frustrating because, you know, no matter how many acting classes you go to, you can't prepare for being on set with the camera with the director giving you good or bad direction, <laughs> you know, with having good or bad writing, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because all people <laughs> see is your face on the camera and you either make it work or you don't make it work. And I would get a little nervous on sets. And so when I originally got offered general hospital and I auditioned, but the, the original thing was I, I wanted an intensive acting experience where I could a just be on set B, uh what I love about soap operas and daytime is and it's and it's kind of comedic but the storylines and the problem solving that you have to do is next level because you're like okay yeah. uh I my character was alive for 16 years he died and now I'm him <laughs> you know what I mean and it's like so you give it's such a high level of difficulty in a lot of ways. You don't have special effects. You don't have cinematography. You don't. I mean, you do, but you know, it's it's limited, sure. and you don't have soundtracks. You don't have all of the cool tricks that can help you in different genres. Sure. And so, sure. originally, that's why I wanted to do it. Is I was just mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to do it for three years, 
I want to walk out of this place a better actor. I want to be more confident. I want to uh, feel more comfortable on sets. I want to try a lot of different things. And I knew I was going to be leaving in three years. Now, the arc of it was interesting because what happens is I met you guys and I meet, you know, all the other cast and you fall in love with the crew and the, everybody along with it. And so two and a half years in, you're like, ooh, this decision that was so clear in the beginning is getting complicated because I kind of love a lot of things about this, even though it's like you said, it could be a golden handcuff situation for some people. Sure. sure. Uh, yeah. But for me, so I knew that the end was coming. And now I'll be, it wasn't like GH was saying, hey, Marcus, we want you to stay. There was no negotiation or anything like that. And I, and I, all I can say to that is, uh, I don't know why that decision was made, but I don't feel any ill will. And it didn't feel like I got fired. It just felt like, I don't know. I think there was maybe an understanding that I was going to be there for three years. And I think uh, the big surprise is how much it hurt. You know what I mean? That I wasn't going to, even though I knew I was going to leave, but it hurt. Sure. Well, of and, course. You yeah. Know, that said, I think it was the best thing that could have happened because if GH would have asked me to stay that would have been a really hard decision and and truthfully i really do have some big goals and those goals would have never been realized if i would have stayed at general hospital and that's not to take anything away from general hospital because sure. i admire everything about it and honestly the one of the my favorite things about it is the introduction to the fans because in 25 years of acting i've never seen anything like the fans of General Hospital, because these guys have started from, some of them have started from birth and yeah. they're so passionate and involved and positive and they're very much like a family. So, yeah. So let me touch, Marcus, let me touch on a few things there. Okay. Cause yeah. that was you, you, what you said was very gracious and you handled it graciously. And, and what I think the people may not realize, there's two things that you brought up is the connection with the people and, and the crew be, really does become like family. Yeah. And, and whether, whether it's noted outside of our, you know, uh, our in, inner circle that does have a pull, right? Because Absolutely. I grew up there. So <sighs> it was never easy to walk away. I could, right. No matter, it. no matter the circumstance, it was never easy. Everyone's bawling. It's like, you're leaving your family. It's not a great position to be in. No, that's and it, I, and it does I, hurt because we're human years and you we're being human. there as long as you were. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, and, and, and we're, we're human beings. Right. But yeah. there's the other part, too, which people sometimes don't really understand is is when you're an actor, you're you're always looking to grow and evolve also because that's the nature of an actor. Right. right. Hey, I yeah. want to do this. I came in to do these these types of movies. Oh, cool. This opportunity did present itself. And it's maybe not ideally what I want to do, but it is a great boot camp. It's going to teach me sure a lot of things about acting and people and communication and listening and the crew and the cat, well, all that stuff. But then you kind of feel like, wow, this is, I don't want to be uh, ungrateful because I got a job and a lot of actors don't get a job, you know, but I also have other aspirations. So you have this inner battle going also of like, that's where the golden handcuffs always come in. That's the term that everyone in daytime uses because it's true. It allows you to do certain things, have a family, have a certain schedule, make good money. But then you kind of have to stifle the other things that get you fired up and the passion that you have inside of you. And it's almost this internal compromise that you start going through toward the end of each contract. Mm. I don't believe that there's any actor who doesn't go through this type of struggle. Like maybe over the years it dissipates. And you're like, hey, I'm grateful I'm here. It's okay. But there's always that. I mean, Maurice struggled with it for years, like yeah. all the time toward the end. He's like, I got to go do something else. Thank God they let him go do all this stuff, you know, all these other things to, to fuel that because we we can't just do as, as an entertainer, 
when people got so mad at me for leaving, it's like, we're actors. We're trying to do other things. And I didn't do get to do a lot. Of, I got to do a lot of projects, but like Bradford, he grew up in musical theater. He was able to create and, and do all this great stuff. And for people who just kind of get into the acting side, like we did for TV, you know, maybe we want to go do theater. Maybe we want to explore these other avenues, right? Can you do it on a show? Yes, yeah, sometimes. It, it, can you do other things on a show? Not a lot. And that's where the golden hand, handcuffs come in that people don't realize. Like, you know, Frank actually does let people out sometimes, but a lot of, a lot of executive producers are like, no, you're here. Right. Like, we signed you for to be here. Right. So you, there's this, there's always this internal struggle. I feel, you know, because you, you and I have had deep conversations about life and your personal growth in three years has been incredible. But also I know you were, we talked about, cause you have, a, you love writing and you love doing these other things and you want to go explore, you know? So I always believe things happen for a reason. And I always believe that when one door closes, many are going to open. Thanks, dude. Because yeah. you put well, that no, it's so true. I, I, and I know your perspective, and I know how you look at things in life that they do happen for you. And this is this is just another one of those things, you know. So anyway, that was long winded, but no, that was beautiful, and you nailed it. And it's like it's like I remember my first girlfriend that I loved, and I thought she was the most beautiful world girl in the world. Blah blah blah. blah and uh, she broke up with me, and I was wrecked, dude. <laughs> Here, and I was just telling my kid this because I was like. You, the, the future is just you just don't know man and at the time it can seem one way but in hindsight there's been very few things that i've looked back at and and said wow i'm i'm bummed that happened like it it always sure. there's always pros and cons to everything and silver lining sure. and everything and, sure and yeah man I, I think i'm gonna i think you know there's this great book called 12 against the gods and the introduction is about adventurers and people that shelter and we all have both of those within us but the adventurer and he, he's talking about these 12 people in history like alexander the great who had conquered the world but the problem with an adventurer is is the more they have the adventure starts to go away because there has Correct. to be a sense of danger and a sense of like i gotta grab things but when you have sure. everything it's gone right. and so I think for better or worse, I love the adventure. It's what brought me to LA. And it's less, I think, even about General Hospital than one of my favorite things about acting is your job is constantly changing. There's something that I love about, oh my gosh, what's next? Oh hmm. no, what am I going to do? And <laughs> sure. I sales and, and this guy was telling me this great thing. He was like, there's certain fish that live in high pressure water. And if they go into low pressure water, they die. And there's that's happened to me. I've there's been moments where things were really comfortable and I had everything and I would gain weight and I would just feel like the game was over. And I really love the rush and the fear and the terror of like, <clears throat> what's dude, how am I going to survive this? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and I could say, and I could say, because knowing you three years ago, you, you didn't have that perspective. No, I think three years ago I was, I was kind of, and th this is the thing is it, like I said, we all have both of them in them. There, there, there's that desire yeah. to have the comfort and the di desire. Sure. Of course. And at that point I wanted the comfort because I'd been on the adventure for yeah. a while. It stopped mm. sure. acting. I just took a break and I was selling lotion out of Costco's and I was like, this sucks. <laughs> 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 yes. Hey, so, yeah, I can't, I can't argue with that. Right. <laughs> so that's awesome. So what's going on? What's next? What are we doing? What are we looking to do next? You're chilling now well, with your daughter and then what happens? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm writing, I'm reading my, uh, my friend has a production company, my ex-wife, to be honest, she's a director and, you know, we're talking about some things. Uh, awesome. So I'm writing and then, and then I'm also investing a lot of time with my kid. I, I think part of the problem yeah. with being an actor is you can get really selfish and it's all about self-improvement. It's an all, it's all about you and what you yeah. need. And, uh, sure. I'm taking this little bit of time that I have to just really 
be Mr. Mom and I'm cleaning and I'm cooking and I'm watching Instagram <laughs> tutorials on how to clean with vinegar and <laughs> you know what's That's amazing. What's fascinating about that, man, though, is like you know, yeah, as an actor, you you can always put pressure on yourself because you know so many things that you read and see and assume other people are doing is like man they're they're in this regiment of going to class of doing you know reading acting books and doing scene study at night and doing all this and man i'm not doing all that but what like what you just described about spending connecting more with your kid connecting to uh, a, di a, a different approach to taking care of things like i don't know the best actors are the best well-rounded humans man and if you're using a different part of your brain and connecting to what you're doing in that respect, obviously connecting to your kid like that, making yourself available, that if 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 that doesn't help your acting, well, I don't know what does. Do you know what I'm saying? Like opening yourself up to different experiences, opening yourself up to a more connected experience with your family, that that's that's human work and that makes you a better artist, yeah. I think. I don't know. Absolutely, dude. It, it was crazy. So on my flight to LA, uh, I was texting with a friend because we had Wi-Fi and I could text. And um, I got a little irritable. I got a little irritated. And I texted him this text that wasn't, it wasn't horrible, but it was a little bit, I was a little bit of an a-hole, right? Yeah. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I hit send the plane. <laughs> and and i i'm not kidding i'm like this is it and i felt i was like my last communication sent out is this is this Jerky. and i'm dead and, and he's like well the last thing he said was this <laughs> oh man and it i know was right of a, I, I was like you know I, i'm so competitive and i love the hustle and i love the grind but um, I think I'm in a, in, a, in a period of growth right now where I also love and appreciate being a dad of a daughter who's 14. I mean, I've got four more years because my yeah. kid's like me. She's going to be like, see you guys. I, I want to go adventure. Yeah. And my poor parents, I feel bad for them. I see them <laughs> so rarely. I love them more than anything. But I'm just like, I got to go play. You know what I mean? I got to do my thing. So yeah, I, I think right now I'm, I'm, I don't know if it'll make me a better artist. I hope it will. And I could see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, that uh, doesn't have to be a conscious thing. It's like, Oh, is this going to make me, you know what I'm saying? You yeah, know, I do know what you mean. And I think it's a pot. And I love that because I think, you know, what's great about that is looking at the silver lining and everything. And I think that's important. Um, but I, I know that I spent a lot of her youth uh, kind of doing my thing, you know? Mm. And yeah. And it kills me it, it cause I yeah. missed a lot of amazing things. And it wasn't like yeah. I was doing my thing, going to the bars and blah, blah, blah. I mean, sure. like going to acting class and going to the gym and, and yeah. cause I well, have, get I got to hustle to work. Like for yeah, me, it's, sure. I got to hustle. Well, you know? well, here's the, here's the great thing is now you have the chance to spend as much time as you want with her. That's it. You know what I mean? And this, and honestly, these years are super important. Because now we're getting into the teen years and the high school years and self-esteem, self-confidence, all that stuff. I know you're helping her build, but like th these are the most important time. This is the most important time. Not that it's not when they're kids. Of course it is. But we all can have the regrets like, oh, I wasn't home a lot, you know, but you have to provide also and you have to work and you have you to do all that. these things. Yeah. So, right. you know, that's that's the that there's always an eternal struggle with that for sure. You know, but the fact that you get this time now to just rest kind of recharge reboot new perspective on moving forward and the time with your daughter i think it's awesome man so yeah i'm, I'm excited really, for you brother yeah, well and I also really... and also i see you know <clears throat> through through our social media stuff i see you finding opportunities to be creative um what in in short form and long form like you know i know you you say you write um like the advent of that stuff sharing your music uh sharing your phys like you're dancing like whatever it is yeah. was that something was that something that you were connected to before gh or did, is, is the, the last three years has that been kind of something you found as well you know yeah so i've i've been uh i've deleted instagram three times <laughs> that, and That's i mean so the funny. entire account sure <laughs> yeah. 
So there was a period of time where I was I was doing these little videos with my friends and and we kind of created this little mm, production company like really really tiny, and uh, that that's my happy place. It it really is. And then I stopped doing it because I found I don't know what it is about me, but I have to literally be all in with acting to work. I can't mm. I can't have side things going on. It literally has to be I have to be that guy that's in acting class and. And then for some reason, that's when I work. Mm. Uh, ironically, though, now that I think about it, when I booked GH, I was kind of being Mr. Mom. I was in Australia with uh, <laughs> my daughter. That's funny, actually. <laughs> so I don't know how that uh, that that was that was unique for me. Um, but so I so it got rekindled by Maurice Bernard because he was like. He was talking to me about the importance of social media, especially when my character was so incredibly unlikable. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He was That's like, you funny. have to. He's like, you got to get on. So, and, and I guess it was just one of those things where I needed somebody to give me permission. And I was like, sure. you know, it's okay to do these things and be kind of myself and goofy. And, and then it was just like, you know, and, right. uh, uh, you know, and I, I struggle with social media because I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what the, I, I've never gotten a job from social media, you know, but, I, sure. but I enjoy the hell out of it. I love it right. so much. It's so fun. I love the instant response that you get. Um, I, I really, really love it. Yeah. 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 It's a pro and con situation, but if you can, if it can, it is. if it can elicit some sort of creativity or gosh, even, even in, in the worst case scenario, if you just feel pressure to have to create something um sometimes that that actually brings something out of you so it's it's it's, in, it's interesting and th there's no deadlines though on any of that stuff right it's not like someone's saying hey you gotta post every day i mean people will tell you that if if they're if they think you want to get a job out of social media but like if you have an idea you can share it and that's that's kind of cool it's it very cool and i i think that creative space to me is heaven on earth like when i'm creating whether it's a, a silly instagram video or whatever and it was funny me and maurice were talking about because we were you know obviously doing a lot of stuff how we felt like it was making us better actors on general hospital because there there's so little pressure and there's so much freedom and you're doing such goofy ridiculous things sure but you're doing it so often that now you get on set and all of a sudden, it was what I was going for, which was I'm so relaxed. I have a director telling me to do something, and I'm I'm kind of listening to it, but really, I'm <laughs> like, this is my opportunity. And uh, yeah, I think it I think it's made me a better artist. I feel actually like it's that with General Hospital. I feel like I'm a completely different actor than when I started. It, you know, it's interesting. I was in I was in the green room the other day, and Ken Schreiner was in there. And I was talking to Ken and he was talking about the, you know, the things that you guys did with Maurice and, um, and he loved it. And he was, he, you know, he was talking about improvising and how you guys were just kind of like, you know, finding things and kind of going for it. And one, you know, and you do one take and be like, that's good. Like Ken, I don't, that creative process for him kind of lit him up a little bit and he really liked it. And he, so he was, he was sad that he wasn't sure if you guys would have opportunities to do that again. And, but he really talked about that process that you and Maurice created that he then became involved with. And it really, it, he really loved it. Just the oh, process that you guys created. Yeah. It, it may, it, 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 it warms my heart, heart so much hearing about that. Cause I love Ken and it's one of, I, I, I love helping other people and you know, these artists and, and LA and the world is probably filled with billions of them they get so beat down or they're underutilized. And then there's this kind of frustration that can build in them. And, and I remember watching a shift with Ken and honestly, and Maurice may, might disagree with it, but even Maurice, like you see this, this childlike playfulness light up in their eyes. Mm. And uh, it, it makes me so happy to experience that and to watch that happen with somebody and to, and to be able to, and that's, that's a huge reason why, why I want to write and have a production company is that I want to give actors uh, a safe place to just unleash because I think actors can sometimes be so low on the totem pole. And I think the administrative side of the industry 
has such a high stake situation where if, it, if this scene doesn't work, my, I'm going to get fired. If we don't get ratings, I'm going to get fired. And that can sometimes bleed on actors and it can be very fear based. And so these artists are put in a position where it's like, it's like somebody strangling them and saying, sink, you know what I mean? Instead yeah. of, I like, I like giving an environment where I think whatever you're going to do and whatever you're going to create is genius. And to me, when you see that confidence comes up, come up, it's incredible what comes out. And you might have some things that maybe could be better or whatever, but there's these moments of freedom and just pure creation and confidence because it's really make-believe. And so when these guys can't fully believe, it's beautiful and it's magical yeah. and, and I love it. And it reminds yeah. me of like the Goonies and, and these magical moments that I had in film, never ending story where un completely unrealistic circumstances, but everybody's they're playing, you know? Yeah. 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 Watching you guys and, and, and listening to you now, like the pursuit of what, what, what it is that we love about it, whether it's the, the freedom, the, just the buzz, right. whatever it is, like, you know, and you talk about you being an adventurer and um, sounds like you're very firmly still on that path and there's a lot to come, a lot of great stuff to come. So. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. It's awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. Thank thanks you. dude. Thanks for, thanks for doing this. I appreciate it so much. Appreciate just you. Uh, I'll, we'll talk. So I don't have to say I'll miss you because I don't see you that much anyway, right. but we do talk a lot. So it's fine. <laughs> we more For sure. Yeah, What's buddy, for sure. We'll be in touch 100%. Awesome. So. All right, Marcus. Hooray! Marcus, you're the man. Love you guys, man. I'm Love you too, buddy. If you guys want to talk, I'm always down. Uh, you guys are so positive, and I appreciate you guys. Thank right. you, buddy. So it's always a good chat. Awesome. Always. Awesome.